welcome in analytical chemistry lecture series today we are going to see the flame emission spectroscopy it is denoted as fes and it is also called as a flame photometry now in this flame photometry the flame emission spectroscopy it is a spectroscopy spectral study like atomic absorption spectroscopy here it is a emission spectroscopy and for emission the atom should be go to the higher energy level that is excited state it requires the energy and this energy is taken from the flame and therefore it is called as the flame emission spectroscopy now in this video lecture we are going to understand the introduction part the theory of atomic emission spectroscopy instrumentation of flame emission spectroscope photo, spectrophotometer fes measurement of emission of atomic species interferences in emission spectroscopy methods of analysis like calibration curve method standard addition method internal standard addition method some qualitative and quantitative applications of fes and some numerical problems the flame emission spectroscopy now in this technique what happen the atom or molecule present in the solution when it absorb the heat energy from the flame it goes to the excited state now when it absorb the energy and it goes to the excited state and after certain time it come back to the ground state at that time after coming ground state whatever he absorb the energy it release the energy in the form of light radiation the absorbed radiation and emitted radiation the slightly differ is there because it requires it consumes some energy for goes to the excited state and therefore it emit the radiation in the different uh, wavelength when it absorb in the one wavelength now when an atom absorb this energy goes to the excited state and come back to the ground state this is the basic principle of flame photometer now in this technique the flame is used to heat the metal to go to the higher energy level and therefore it is called as a flame emission spectroscopy spectroscopy now in the theory of uh, this uh, method now this is the flame where it emit the radiation and this emitted radiation passing through the monochromator and transfer to the detector and they are monitor now the function of the, this technique is a similar to the as but here there is no requirement of the flame, uh, lamp as a source because from the flame the radiations are given out in the various uh, wavelength it depend on the metal ion which metal enters into the flame on this basis the flame emit the radiations now for example here lithium gives the pink color flame now when sodium enter into the flame it gives the yellow color when it, the calcium uh, metal ion enters into the flame it gives the sort brown colored flame when copper or barium enters into the flame then either greenish blue colored flame is given out and when cesium is transfer the completely blue colored flame is coming out and when potassium is uh, transfer here then slightly red reddish color uh, flame is given out now these colors that means it emit the radiation in the different wavelength now these wavelengths it is measured as as a uh, e is equal to h nu where h is the planck's constant and nu is the frequency of the emitted radiation from this radiation one can study the what type of metal ion present in the solution now sometime what happen the two or three uh, more than two metal ions are present in the so, uh, solution it enters into the flame the each and every metal has a specific characteristic property to emit the radiation in the certain wavelength for this purpose we have we have to take the monochromator the radiations are coming from the flame they are transfer through the monochromator and from that monochromator we can select any single wavelength and from that wavelength we can identify which metal is present that is a qualitatively and from the absorbance uh, from the transmittance we can uh, uh, from the intensity of the transmitted light or emitted light from that one can understand what is the concentration of the metal ion now this is a very simple technique based on the uh, emission spectral analysis now here uh, what happened the initially the solution present as a 
metal ion solution. After aspiration into the flame, it transfer into the MX droplet. Then get evaporated due to the heat energy of the flame. Then it forms the solid. After the solid, the by absorption of the heat, it decomposes and transfer to the neutral atom. And after neutral atom, when it absorbs the heat energy, it goes to the excited state and excited atom emit the radiation and we observe or we measure the emitted light. This is the basic fundamental principle of this technique. It is a very simple technique and uh, also last technique because uh, directly we can find the concentration of the metal ion present in the solution. Now the, the instrumentation part is a very simple as the same as a AAS, but instead of AAS, here well, lamp is not there. Just only the what are the parts? The atomizer, it contains the nobilizer and burner. It is kept here. Monochromator, it is kept here. Monochromator may be a prism, grating, or simple uh, filters are available. Uh, uh, filters required uh, from the, for example, suppose we have to determine the calcium, we require the calcium filter. And therefore, instead of this uh, number of filters are used, we can use the prism or grating in the instrument. Then after that, the detector is there. The same photo uh, tube or photovoltaic cell or photomultiplier tube detector is used. And then recorder. Recorder records directly the what is the intensity of the emitted light and uh, what is the wavelength of the light. From these two factors, one can understand what is the concentration of metal and which metal ion present in the solution. Now, in the instrumentation part, uh, we required the uh, for atomizer, nebulizer system is there. Now, in the nebulizer system, what happened? The nebulizer system, uh, we know that in the uh, AS, the aspirator is there, the um, uh, fuel coming from the uh, cylinder, the uh, oxidant is coming from the oxidant uh, cylinder, and these are with its own pressure. They are transferred here into the nebulizer. Nebulizer controls the uh, ratio of fuel to oxidant ratio to get the uh, respective temperature to the flame and uh, aspirator that is a uh, aspirate the solution and uh, we are using here the burner is a total consumption burner now in this case uh, first part is the uh, nebulizer uh, then burner this is the monochromator prism is there and this is the detector photo tube detector is used and the recorder systems are uh, recorder systems are there. These are the control panel, and on the display card we can detect what is the concentration of the metal ion and what is the wavelength which uh, um, uh, emitted light. And that uh, wavelength can be measured. Uh, concentration is measured directly by using this. And the, whatever the gases are coming from the flame, they are uh, removed by using the uh, chimney, or we are saying that it is a uh, aspirator uh, uh, exhaust fan is connected there. In this way, this type of simple instrumental part is there. Now, uh, first part is related to the atomizer. In the atomizer, what happened? The function of atomizer is to convert the uh, solution, which is aspirated from the solution to the burner. It tra completely transfer into the fog, very, very small droplet. And this is the picture of the fog. It uh, enters into the flame directly. Now, after that, the burner is there. Uh, this is the nebulizer system. This is connected to the oxidant fuel. Uh, then this is the aspirator system, and which are the which has the control uh, to maintain the constant ratio. Oxidant maybe a air, maybe oxygen or fuel, maybe acetylene or LPG gas like propane. Uh, in this way, or nitrous oxide may be uh, used when uh, hard metals we have to detect. This is a total consumption burner. Whatever the fuel oxidant coming directly to the burner uh, in the same time the due to the pressure vacuum is created into the uh, this uh, uh, solution uh, capillary and it get aspirated and directly transferred to the flame and therefore total consumption burner is used now this total consumption burner after that the monochromator is used now after emission of the radiation from the flame uh, the so many type of radiations are coming out out of which we have to select one of the radiation for this purpose, we require the prism and that prism, uh, we can select any wavelength from, uh, it is specific for the metal ion and only these metal ions are monitored with the help of monochromator. Now, after that, uh, the uh, uh, detectors are used, 
the photo multiplier tube photo tube uh, detector photovoltaic cell detectors are there but uh, photo multiplier tube is more normally used because uh, it uh, requires the very it measures the very low concentration uh, it, it it may be in the ppb or ppm level uh, we can measure and this is the one of the photo multiplier tube here diodes are connected here this is the cathode and from this cathode suppose uh, the light coming emitted from the emission and it falls on the uh, cathode and it transfer to the first dynode and this dynode has a function to multiply this light into double uh, two times one uh, radiation get converted into two uh, electrons then three four electrons then eight electrons in this way the uh, in the photo multiplier tube in these dynodes the number of electrons are increased and they are monitor and they converted into the electrical pulses and then uh, transfer to the recorder in this way the photo multiplier tube uh, works uh, this is the spherical type this is a tube like and therefore photo, photo multiplier tube may be in the tube uh, format or in the spherical format in this way uh, we can use this as a detector in the flame emission spectrophotometer now in the measurement of the uh, emission spectroscopy uh, what we have to do now this is the instrumental part we know that uh, the instrumental part what requires uh, there uh, we require the prepare of prepare the standard and test solution standard solution we require for the comparison for preparation of the standard graph we have to use the uh, standard solution and for a test solution that is the unknown solution uh, then start the comp uh, for the initially we have to start the compressor first then we have to start the uh, instrument ignite the flame and we have to warm up the instrument uh, for warm up period for the detector also it required the warm up period for flame also we have to maintain the proper temperature for this purpose the about 15 minutes are required to start up this instrument after that we have to aspirate the distilled water to clean the burner and uh, we get the uh, zero absorb uh, zero emission from the distilled water and then we have to make the zero emission then aspirate the distilled water first into the flame then select the filter monochromator on selected uh, wavelength we have to select the monochromator wavelength if prism is there then we have to adjust the rotate this prism in a such a way that we require the uh, proper wavelength or if it is a monochromator uh, simple absorption filter is there then we have to use uh, the uh, proper metal filter uh, we have to select uh, in the instrument then aspirate the five standard solutions in the duplicate or in maybe in the uh, multiplet uh, uh, then after five standard what happened then it allowed to aspirate into the uh, flame then we have to measure the intensity of the emitted radiation and then by using any uh, method it may be a calibration method it may be a standard addition method it may be another method like graphical method then we can find out easily the uh, what is the concentration of the metal ion in this way we can use this instrument then uh, some spectral interferences are there like physical interference uh, chemical interferences spectral interferences now this can be understood when we are analyzing the sample now in case of the physical interference what happened the viscosity of the solvent uh, we should know that uh, viscosity affects the uh, measurement uh, for preparation of the solution standard solution as well as for the preparation of the test solution we should know the viscosity of the solvent it affects the uh, uh, analysis then another uh, is related to the flame temperature we have to maintain the flame temperature because this is a physical interference flame temperature should be constant for the whole analysis then chemical interferences are there uh, some uh, stable compounds formations are there in the solution and it cannot be aspirate uh, and then once the uh, if not aspirate into the flame they cannot be detected and therefore stable compound formation we should know what type of uh, stable compound are whether they are formed or not it should be known uh, suppose for example some phosphate sulfate uh, silicate ions are present in the solution then uh, the metal forms the uh, insoluble phosphate sulfate and silicate and it remain in the present in uh, remain there into the solution it does not aspirate into the uh, flame therefore they cannot be uh, interact they cannot be measured by using this therefore such a type of chemical interferences should be removed we should know that what type of this there then we can change the precipitate uh, procedure for the preparation of the solution then another chemical interference is the ionization now uh, some in uh, sometime what happen ionization of the other atoms are more then uh, with respect to the in presence of more ionized at, uh, moly, uh, metal ion uh, it can affect in the um, uh, transformation of into the flame and emission in the factor 
uh, this type of uh, ionization uh, chemical interferences are there then another spectral interferences are there sometime what happen two metal ions are there they are emitted the radiation in the very close to each other uh, uh, with respect to the wavelength and then we should know that what what type of elements metal ion present in the solution these metal ions uh, are there then we have to mask one of the metal ion and then we have to measure the for the other metal ion these type of interferences we can minimize first and then we can use this solution for the aspiration and we get the uh, removal of the all interferences in this way we have to look towards the interferences also then uh, for uh, calibration method what happen uh, the calibration method standard addition method internal standard methods are there now in calibration method what happen we have to take the uh, five standard solutions and these five standard solution from that we have to plot the standard graph by measurement of the emission for each concentration and then unknown uh, solution get aspirated immediately what happen we get the emission intensity from that intensity we can find out the unknown concentration now in case of the standard addition method uh, we already discussed in the uh, as method in this method what happened the uh, initially unknown solution is taken into the uh, suppose four to five uh, sample bottles and then on that unknown solution we have to add the standard solution which know the concentration now these standard solutions are added uh, then we have to add the so solvent we have to uh, uh, shake uh, this so proper solution and then all solutions get aspirated in the first so solvent what happened the unknown uh, standard solution is not there but after certain uh, the second tube third tube fourth tube uh, we add the uh, uh, known concentration or a standard solution in the uh, uh, for example in case of uh, second uh, 10 ml we are adding in the second we have to add the uh, 20 ml then 30 ml this type of concentrations are added standard solution unknown solution is kept constant here and then we have to measure the emission intensity and plot the graph the, it gives this plot uh, after extrapolating this line the unknown concentration with the very low concentration we can find out easily this is the standard addition method calibration method standard addition method and third uh, is related to the uh, internal standard addition method the same type of graph is observed in the uh, as in uh, standard addition method uh, unknown solution can be identified with a very uh, 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 low level uh, even that ppm or ppb level uh, the qualitative and quantitative applications of the fes when we are seeing this uh, this are uh, this method is uh, mostly used for the alkali metals uh, these are the soft metals they uh, use the radiation uh, uh, emit the radiation when it enters into the flame and therefore uh, very long uh, wavelength uh, specific distance are there in each uh, metal ion therefore they can detect easily for alkaline earth metals also we can use this instrument for some transition metal like copper iron uh, then uh, nickel uh, zinc these type of metals ions are also detected with the help of fes but mostly the alkali metal and alkaline earth metal for uh, gives the perfect result uh, for the emission uh, radiations and some of the inner transition metals like uh, uh, europium terbium yttrium now these uh, yttrium uh, then uh, dysprosium, niodium, uh, these type of metals ions are also in the transition metals are also detected by the FES. It's qualitatively as well as quantitatively we can do simultaneously. Uh, it requires just only the uh, 5 to 10 ml solution and from that solution one can determine easily the number of elements uh, at a time by changing the uh, wavelength. Now in this way uh, we can use or apply for the uh, in case of the uh, numerical problems, suppose uh, these are the uh, concentration of X, uh, uh, unknown va values, the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 are the standard solutions and unknown solution of this uh, solution is there. Then relative intensity of X is measured, then relative intensities of the Y that is the uh, uh, is measured. Now uh, from the Y and X, mm -hmm. we can find out the concentration of X. Uh, by knowing the uh, ratio of the intensity of the x and y after finding the this ratio uh, if you take the unknown concentration unknown intensity of the uh, ix upon the i y the unknown con for the un unknown concentration from that we can find out the concentration even that by using the uh, taking the log of this uh, value con we can find out the unknown concentration in this way we can solve the problems related to the uh, fes this is a very uh, simple, uh, important technique. This is the last technique we can find out the uh, metal ion concentration. Now, in this uh, video, uh, we uh, learn 
uh, introductory part of the FES theory of the uh, this emission spectroscopy instrumentation part measurement of the emission of atomic species then interferences related to the spectral uh, physical chemical interferences then methods of analysis like calibration curve standard addition method internal standard method then qualitative quantitative applications and some numerical problems we can solve with the help of uh, this uh, emission uh, intensities uh, this is a very simple uh, technique uh, it is um, uh, related to the atomic uh, atomic absorption technique just only uh, this is the absorption technique and uh, the flame emission is the emission technique uh, this is the differ in these two uh, techniques okay uh, thank you for watching the, this video